Hello, hello, it's Teresa. I'm back. Welcome to the 11th Hour Shaman's Cup of Tea podcast slash video blog, where each week you and I will explore a shaman's perspective and practices in emotional sovereignty, self-reliance, nutritional herbalism and natural health, dream work, intuitive body work, and soul purpose, plus a kaleidoscope of topics when choosing an unconventional path in these modern days, all so that you and I can create a life that we love to love. I know you've heard it, love to love you, baby. I love to love everything about my life. And sometimes I don't, (laughs) but I think we all want to love, to love everything in our lives. And so here we are. I'm your hostess, Teresa Gutierrez, grateful daughter of the healers before me, a spiritual entrepreneur, an author, NDEer, a vegan strong mother of four and goofy Grammy of two, and the founder of 11th Hour Shaman, the portal for bringing your dreams into physical reality. How do we do this? By living in a daily rhythm that's in alignment with your soul's purpose. That's a personalized strategy for success. Together, we'll delve into the secrets of your personal power to heal anything and create a delightful whole life full of beauty, laughter, intimacy, and purpose. This is the place where we connect with our souls again, laugh with our souls again, nourish our bodies, and make conscious contact with that inexplicable peace deep within. If you value transformational personal growth and soul purpose, if you value your body temple and health, as the conduit to spirit that it is, if you value your sovereignty and self-reliance, you've landed in the right place because we discuss real strategies and earth-based shamanic practices proven safe and effective for decades or, you know, millennia in all reality. So nestle in with your favorite cup of tea or the coffee that you like the most or a plant-based protein shake. Then take a deep breath. Breathe through your heart and say an internal thank you for the angel sitting right next to you and me. This is your time to feel empowered. Now let's get after it. Nursing old wounds, four strategies to wean off your past. This is quite a story how he came up with this. So I think most of us have heard the phrase of nursing old wounds. In fact, I think it's important to treat our emotional wounds just as seriously as we would treat a physical wound. Like you break your arm, you go to the doctor. Am I right? Most of us likely hear this phrase, nursing old wounds, and think of a registered nurse tending to our wounds cleaning the wounds, wrapping the gauze, changing out our bandages in the battlefield tents or the hospital. Can you see it? However, for some odd reason, that is my animated funny brain. I was reading a book where the author, Robert Moss, was discussing how we repeat old old, or our tired out old stories from our past histories the defeats, the disappointments, the heartbreaks, the abuses, the losses. He wrote, either way, by nursing grief or guilt or nostalgia, we manage to go through life looking in the rearview mirror, stuck in the past, never fully available to the present moment. So my brain did me dirty right then and flashed a picture of an older woman nursing the adult 22-year-old wounded version of herself at the breast, sucking the life force energy out of her. (laughs) It's quite an image, am I right? But that's just what flashed through my head, that this is what we do when we live unintentionally in default mode. 
it's normal and healthy to nurse a baby or a fresh wound. But picture it, 20 years of regret and resentment as a past version of ourselves when we received a life wound. Being nursed and just continually sucking the life force energy right out of our present lives. I'm hoping that image sparks a little humor at the symbolism of what we end up doing to ourselves. This is so damaging to our health, our body, our mind, and our spirit. Just like when nursing a baby for the purpose of nourishing the little one to grow healthy and strong, when we give our life force energy, our time and attention to nursing our past selves stuck in an old wound, we're basically giving our past pain everything it needs to keep growing and thriving. I don't think any of us really want that. So how do we break this habit? this skill of nursing old wounds like an infant with no end date in sight. I've had plenty of practice with this, <clears throat> been through a bit much, <laughs> tons of child abuse, deaths of so many loved ones, and divorce. So I'll share what I've learned with you here, how I approached healing those old wounds and created emotional resilience. I want to be really clear that healing and emotional stability are not about being a flat line. It's about your recovery time, your bounce back created by awareness and truth. I've recently been going through several challenges at once, some of which were initially quite painful, but even more painful than the actual circumstances themselves were my thoughts about the events, the other people involved, and myself. I'm not a perfect person. I'm not an enlightened being at this time that I know of. Far from it. But I do continually use these strategies below to climb my way out of any dark pit of despair I find myself at the bottom of. I have had many, many, many blessed moments of, I guess you would call it, awakening or enlightenment and some have lasted for days and some just that moment that day that incredible perspective that brought healing and peace and unconditional love and although I don't get to live in that every second of every day because my life is not a flat line as I'm sure yours isn't either we can always bring ourselves back to that foundation of truth, which is that we are always unconditionally loved and unconditionally lovable. So here's some of my strategies. Number one, know your purpose. Know who you really are. That is a capital A, divine, thank you, of the divine, and why you're really here. So that's your purpose and who you really are. Then within that, redecide your core values and standards for living. The person you want to be and are becoming. Strategy two, gain perspective and start aligning to and practicing your values. This strategy includes ancient shamanic mindset and many options for shamanic earth-based healing practices to create awareness, connect with source and yourself, digest negative emotions, and transmute the root cause of the wounds. And strategy three, dream a new dream. Engage your innate human gift of fantasy and imagine, just like Viktor Frankl did, all the way to your freedom, your new life on purpose. Strategy four, turn your fantasy into fact. Dance to the beat of your own drum. Find the daily rhythms that keep you feeling connected to yourself, your heart, your soul, your source, your dreams, and that keep you your focused attention and energy on creating a deeply fulfilling life that you love. Each of these strategies deserve their own book, or blog or 
you know, lots of words, <laughs> because a lot of power resides within these strategies. Literally, your divine human potential gets activated in here. So I really encourage you to jump in and do this healing and growth work. About a bazillion years ago, okay, maybe more like six years ago, I used an herbal essence to support me in releasing something specific from my past. I used a blend of garlic, rhubarb, and one other herb that I can't recall. And using these plants in meditations, herbal essences, teas, or tinctures, even as food, can really support our healing in powerful ways. But for this instance, I used it as an herbal essence that I made myself, <laughs> which means I make a tincture out of those herbs, which takes six weeks. And then I take one drop of that tincture and I put it into one ounce of fresh, pure water. And that is the herbal essence. The herbal essence then is taken at four drops under the tongue, held there for one minute. And you take that time to really be with the plants in your mind's eye. Garlic spirit helps us drop our ego, the part of our identity tied into the problem. So we can cut through blockages and obstacles that keep us stuck in the past and help us move forward into a new cycle. Garlic spirit can help us if we find ourselves humbled and alone in this releasing of the past so we can be who we are really meant to be. Part of healing is quite humbling. We'll get to that in a second. So rhubarb, rhubarb spirit gets stuck energy flowing, releases the old and helps us focus on what really matters now so that we can really be in our positive creator energy. Basically, here's how it is. Garlic helps us get off our high tower of arrogance and clinging to our righteousness and our victimhood, drop the old identity and move into awakening and self-actualization, while rhubarb spirit helps us digest the past in a way that's useful. Keep what we needed to learn in a positive way and release everything else so that we can be the true co-creators of our better tomorrows. Remember, plants are our teachers. When we invite plants into our lives and our bodies, we're inviting wise teachers who have already successfully overcome their challenges that are symbolically likened unto our own problems, dilemmas, and mysteries. They instruct our body, mind, heart, souls on how to reanimate and restore the functions of our holistic health so we can fulfill our soul's purpose for being on the planet right now. And clearly we're quite needed right now with everything we're going through. So I suggest we carry them in our pocket, a locket, a teacup, or balm, place them under your pillow to dream with, and let them support your healing. If you need support weaning off your past and creating the future of your dreams on purpose, I am here for you, all of you, your humanness and your omnipotent soul. Simply reach out to Teresa at 11thHourShaman.com. Today is always the best day to get started, and I really can't wait to hear from you. Big hugs till next time. Thank you so much for tuning in to 11th Hour Shaman's Cup of Tea. It has been such a delight sharing this time with you. Remember, there is no reason for you to fear what's coming or settle for less than what your free-spirited, unconventional heart desires. As A Course in Miracles so perfectly states, <laughs> nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. And my cousin, Maria Owl, reminds us that when we know our eternal nature, no one can control us. You deserve to embrace your humanness and your omnipotent soul in this outrageous, beautiful, 
somewhat dramatic dance we call life. And you deserve to know the truth about healing and your divine human potential. You can heal anything when you partner with spirit, plants, and your very own soul's purpose. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe and download a few episodes that inspire you, make you laugh, or get you journaling and medicine making. Please share this episode with the people in your circle of influence that are also seeking spirit-led self-reliance practices, a reconnection to their own soul, and a desire to heal anything blocking them off from their most delightful life. Part of our soul's purpose is what Florence Scovel Shin called perfect self-expression. Are you stifling your self-expression in some way? Where is that happening and how can you move forward? I'm here for you and yours. I'm so honored that you're tuning in. Until next time, let's be our realist selves and move forward towards our dreams. One lit up step at a time. Big squishy hugs till then.